So, you just achieved level 80, and you're interested in learning how to get the best loot for your spec, eh? Well, look no further. My name is Agronis, and I have complete best in slot, and I'm ready to raid. And it's my privilege to be showing you how to achieve just that in today's episode of Pre-Raid Best in Slot War Edition. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the channel. My name is Sky, and today we're going to be going over pre-raid best in slot for warrior DPS in Wrath of the Lich King. I want to quickly go over some super important information about hit rating because you are a melee DPS and you need a total of 8% hit or 263 hit rating minimum in total. You need to know also that 1% hit equates out to 32.7 hit rating overall. You could also skip 3% if you're in a raid with a Shadow Priest or a Moonkin with Fairy Fire spec. If you're an Alliance player with a Drenai in your group, you could take off 1% as well. So now that you learned a little bit about hit rating and how much you need, as a Warrior DPS, you want to focus your stat priority on hit until you're 154 because of the precision talent for 3% hit, expertise at a cap of 26, Armor Penetration being at a cap of 1400, Strength followed by Attack Power, Crit, and then Haste. To save you as much time as possible and to get the biggest power spikes as quickly as you can in your character, you want to prioritize getting Weapons and Trinkets, as those give the biggest jumps in power by far, no matter what class or spec you're playing. Now that all the need to know information is out of the way, let's begin with the Prebis for Warrior DPS. Detailed Excel spreadsheet in the description below. Starting things off, we're going to talk about the head slot, which you will have plenty of options to choose from, starting off with by far the easiest to obtain, and still yet very effective, Helm of Command. This is craftable by Blacksmith, and it gives a bunch of flat strength, crit, and the now newly loved haste stat. After that, we have the Spike Titan Steel Helm, which is one of the top three helmets you can obtain, and it's amazing. i definitely pick this up if you are lacking some hit. It does also give two sockets, one of those being a meta gem slot, which can be easily socketed with very powerful gems to even spike this bad boy up even more. Next up, we have the engineering goggles, the charged titanium specs, which obviously are absolutely amazing to have if you have the hit cap. And it also gives a massive 109 stamina, making you much more beefy as well. This also comes with two sockets with a really nice socket bonus. If you don't want to spend any gold and you'd rather just manually grind it out, then you're going to want to go with the Fang Deflecting Face Guard. It gives you your incredible armor penetration stat and a nice amount of strength. I think this one might have to be a must. Now, one of the most exciting piece sets you can obtain. Trinkets. It's very important to note that I highly recommend grabbing one trinket that's activatable and another trinket that is a chance on hit. You definitely don't want two activatable trinkets because they share a small cooldown period where you can't just use them both at once. So starting things off, you have two very powerful trinkets from Utgard Pinnacle. The Meteorite Whetstone from King Ymirin and the Vestige of Haldor from King Ymirin as well. Two very strong chance on hit trinkets that give two of your best stats and both have really strong effects attached to them as well. Then you have the very, very powerful Sphere of Red Dragon's Blood which drops out a Heroic Nexus from Karastraza. This trinket is massive because you can combine it with your offensive cooldowns to allow you to hit like an absolute Mack truck and give some really good hit as well if needed. Then you have the very powerful Incisor Fragment from Heroic Drakthiron Keep. A nice amount of attack power with 148 and a very massive armor penetration buff, which is very good for warriors in general. If you can't get the Sphere of the Red Dragon's Blood, you have the Fezzik's Pocket Watch also. This comes from the last line of defense quest line, which is pretty solid and should not be slept on. Then you have profession trinkets like the Figurine Emerald Boar, which summons a boar and has two socket slots as well. The Namish Lightning Generator, which comes from Engineering, which is a pretty solid on use trinket on a very short one minute CD. And then lastly, you have the Dark Moon cards as well that are obviously very, very strong if you can get your hands on them. They could be very pricey though. After that, we're going to be talking about shoulders, starting off with the Gold Star Spalders, a really nice piece that you could obtain while you're finishing off your journey to 80. You can get these by getting your reputation with the Oracles to Revere. Also, if you get these guys to Exalted, you can get their Trinket, which is pretty decent as well. After that, we have the Spalders of the Giant Lord, which comes from the Sons of Hodir reputation. It's literally just a better version of the previous Spalders, just with a bit more stats. 
It's important to note that you can get a ton of stuff with the Sons of Hodir rep. A mount, a shoulder enchant with crit and attack power, and your shoulder piece. So potentially a huge 3-in-1 there. Lastly, you have the Snake Den Pauldrons to grab. This has some haste on it and some good stats as well as a socket slot. This drops from Heroic Gundrak from Sladron. All three of these are really good, and you'll be fine with any one of them. Personally, I'll be going for the Giant Lord's Shoulders from the Sons of Hodir rep and getting a nice 3 for 1 deal there. It just seems like way too powerful to pass up on. Now let's move on to the chest piece, starting things off with the chest plate of Conquest. I believe this is bind on pickup, so only blacksmiths can have this, but it's still very good attributes and stats as well and can be worn at level 78, so that's super important to note. If you're not a blacksmith, you have a couple really good options with the engraved chest plate of Ek from Heroic Gundrock, off of Ek the Ferocious, and the Bone Grinder chest plate from Heroic Old Kingdom off of Prince Taldarum. If you need to hit, definitely go with the chest plate of Ek, and if you're hit capped, go ahead and grab the Bone Grinder. The Bone Grinder is a very big item when it comes to armor pieces. It can give an absolute ton of crit if socketed properly, so it's a very valuable item to try and grind out. Me personally, I'm going to take the extra time to make sure I have this piece, no matter what, before Naxxramas. Moving along to hands, where you're quite limited to be honest. You have two options from Heroic Dungeons, the Gauntlets of Dragon Wrath from Heroic Oculus, and Gauntlets of Capture from Heroic Violet Hold. Obviously, if you get some good luck on your side, the Gauntlets of Dragon Wrath are just honestly the best option here. So you definitely want to try to run this dungeon as much as possible to increase your chance of getting this before raid day. The Gauntlets of Caption come from Violent Hold, where you have four amazing Biss pieces for you that drop in there. I will most likely be going for these because Violet Hold just drops so many items for us, and I will be practically living in there for a quick minute. Lastly, if you had a bunch of extra emblems for some reason, you can get the PvP Gloves. They're decent at best, but you can use them for PvP also, so I guess that's kind of a plus. Next up, we have legs, starting off with the leg plates of Bloody Reprisal, which comes from the Wormbreast reputation, but you have to be exalted. These leg plates are very powerful for warriors, so I would definitely make these a priority. Then we have the leg plates of Steel Implants from Heroic Culling, which drops off a meat hook. These are really, really good pants that have a nice chunk of haste on them with two sockets as well. Lastly, you have the staggering leg plates from Heroic Utgard Keep, which drop off of Ingvar the Plunderer. Amazing hit pants if you need the hit. Just these pants give about 2.5% hit just off of this item, pre-socketed. So it's a very, very big pickup if you can grab them and get lucky enough to obtain them. Moving on to bracers, we have another great crafted piece with Vengeance Bindings. These come from blacksmithing, which you can either buy them or, you know, get the mats and just have someone craft it. Um, I highly recommend grabbing these if you desperately need some hit. After that, we have the Bands of the Stone Forge, which drop out of Heroic Halls of Stone. Lastly, we have the Golden Limb Bands from Heroic Azul Narub. These give a really nice amount of crit as well, but to be honest, I would definitely go with the Stone Forge Bands or the Vengeance Bindings here for sure though. If you're lacking the hit, get the Blacksmithing Bracers, and if you have all that covered, grab the Stone Forge Bands for that really nice chunk of haste. You might have to run Halls of Stone quite a bit for these bad boys, but I, I honestly think they're very, very worth it. Now moving along to the waste slot, you have only really a couple options here, but, but they are pretty powerful. Starting off with Strategist Belt from Heroic Utgard Keep, which give a really nice amount of haste as well as a socket slot, and the Flame Bathed Steel Girdle from Heroic Nexus. These give some really, really nice crit, but either way, both of these are really, really good, and it just entirely depends on what your stats are looking like at this point for your character, and figuring out what stat you would need more to really benefit your character more. Now moving on to the best part and my favorite thing to go farm, weapons. Everyone's favorite part. Kicking things off, we have the Rune Blade of Demonstrable Power, which come from the Ebon Blade reputation. This weapon slaps. It gives a ton of really valuable stats and a nice chunk of agility, making for a really good raw DPS weapon. Then we have Sword of Justice, which drops out of Heroic Halls of Stone, which is a pretty good backup option if you can't get any of the others. Next up, we have a pretty good weapon, honestly. We have the Argent Skeleton Crusader, which gives armor penetration and a good amount of strength. This is what makes the Argent Crusade rep so good, is because the armor penetration helmet earlier, and now this. Now, obviously, we have the two fan favorites, the Titan Steel Destroyer, which comes from Blacksmithing, and the Colossal Skull Clad Cleaver, which comes from Heroic Halls of Lightning. Both of these are just equally as good as the other. 
Um, they both give super, super strong stats, and they're really, really strong for a pre-raid item. The weapon DPS is way higher than the others. The attributes are amazing. The stats are amazing. Um, if you have one of these, you're going to crush the meters and knacks no problem. You'll be perfectly fine in there. If hit is a bit of an issue, I'd definitely go for the Titan Steel Destroyer, but if not, that axe is going to be your go-to. It is going to swing for a lot of damage. There's a ton of attack power behind that axe. First on the list for boots, you have the Death and Yurd Sabatons from the Ebon Blade reputation, getting them into Exalted. These boots are great for the two socket slots and a nice chunk of critical strike on them. They also make you tankier with a nice amount of stamina as well. Next, you have the Obliterator Greaves from Heroic Violet Hold. I would definitely recommend trying to grab these for the armor pin. The haste is still valuable to most melee as well. And lastly, you have the Rift Striders out of Heroic Nexus. They give a socket slot, good stats, uh, a nice amount of critical hit, and a lot of items drop out of Nexus. So now we have our ranged weapon, back, and jewelry pieces. It's never easy getting a really good ranged weapon for Warrior DPS, you know, especially with all the you know, rogues and hunters, etc. But um, you do have this one. It is the Drake Mounted Crossbow. Good critical strike rating, good attack power. Comes out of Upguard Keep. Um, really, really solid crossbow. Uh, for back, we have the Cloak of Bloodied Waters, which is a random drop out of the Heroic Gundrock Dungeon. Um, it is a bind on equipped, so you could potentially just buy it and just sort of like be kind of cheeky with it, I guess. Uh, but if you don't have the money, I mean, you don't need to go farm this thing. Like, it's just a back piece. You're not going to, like, lose tremendous DPS. Nothing too bad is going to happen at all. Um, so if you can't get this, honestly, it's no big deal. Um, for the rings, this is where it does get a little bit important, is the Band of Frost Thorns, which come out of Heroic Nexus. And it's a really, really good starter ring for, you know, at least one out of the two rings that you're going to need. Um, and then obviously you have the absolutely broken Ring of the Kirin Tor, which is going to cost you an absolutely massive amount of gold. Um, I would only recommend buying this if you have a surplus of money, but I mean, the stats are amazing. The attributes are amazing. The, I mean, it's just absolutely best in slot. It's one of the best items you can get early on in the expansion. It is, it is so good. So if you have the gold, definitely buy this thing. You will, you will not regret it. Next up, we got the neck piece. Uh, starting off, we got the gold amulet of kings. This is the only strength necklace outside of raids. So ideally, you want to have this like as a top priority. Um, gives 47 strength. Really, really good. Solid critical strike rating as well. Uh, and then next up, you have the titanium impact choker. 84 attack power is pretty good. You got a little bit of agility. Um, has a socket in there, so you could put some strength into it. But it does come from jewel crafting, so you could potentially get it if you have a frozen orb. And you could afford it. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that I created the Excel spreadsheet with all this information laid out on where to get the loot and how many items you want specifically drop from which dungeon to help you maximize your efficiency as much as possible. So please, uh, for a really, really good visual reference, uh, check out the Excel spreadsheet below. Okay, so let's say Wrath of the Lich King launched tomorrow. Uh, the first thing I would definitely try to go do is get the Argent Crusade tabard on me as soon as I possibly can. Uh, for Warriors, this faction is a very, very solid first faction to farm out. You get really good two-handed weapons with armor penetration, a headpiece with armor pen, uh, a pretty good starting gun to at least have something to get you started, a cloak with armor pen as well. So it's like, this is just the warrior faction and all you have to do is get revered to get all these pieces. Uh, moving along to number two is go and try and run Nexus to get some decent gear. There's four items in there that are pretty good uh, for Warrior. Uh, the Critical Strike isn't the absolute best, but it, there are really, really good pieces in there and four of them that can potentially drop, so it can be massive. Uh, if you manage to get any frozen orbs, maybe, you know, after buying one and then farming one out or getting one from a guildie or a friend, uh, you could potentially get a Titan Steel Destroyer out very quickly. Uh, either if you have your blacksmithing up or if someone else has it up. So, you know, you always want to keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, and then on number four is go run J Heroic Drakthiron Keep for the mandatory Incisor's Fragment that comes out of there. Uh, this is really what's going to make your damage numbers absolutely explode on the warrior with how much armor pen this brings you during the activation. Absolutely mandatory to get this thing. Uh, after that, I would go to Heroic Utgard Pinnacle for a chance at two trinkets. 
Uh, you're going to need at least one on-hit chance trinket no matter what, so you definitely need at least one of these. And then lastly, I will try to farm up my rep with the Worm Wrist Record uh, to try to get those sick armor penetration pants for the warrior. I mean, that's that's going to be a huge, huge item spike as well. Um, but then, uh, you know, after all that, it's really just about filling in some armor pieces, which shouldn't be too difficult, uh, while trying to get some enchants and, you know, your professions up to get, you know, pre-raid bis and to really, really be prepared for Nax Rams when it comes out. But, um, okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you all so much for watching, and it truly, truly is an absolute pleasure to make content for you all. Uh, if you made it to the end of the video, if there are any of you still out there, uh, can you just comment for me, I want this, uh, below. I want to see if anyone even makes it to the end of these videos, but, um, anyways, my name's Sky from the Comeback Kids. I love you all. I'll see you in the next one. Peace!